So I just love Water Baptism Sunday. I just love it. And you know what? I also like, I also like it when we can come together and we can eat and we can share it together. So this morning, um, I have the privilege of closing off uh, the last part of our, our um, theme, uh, Simply Christmas. So we looked at, at Joseph and how God used an ordinary carpenter to be the stepfather of his son. How God entrusted Joseph with, with raising and shaping Jesus. And then we saw how Mary uh, came along minding her own business and the, the angel appeared to her and says, God has a plan for your life and you're going to be the mother of the Son of God, the Messiah. And she said, Lord, let it be done unto me according to your word. And then we talked about the manger, and we talked about simply Christmas, that it's a very simple message that Jesus came, he left his, his home in glory, where highest heavens could not possibly outpraise him, and he came in the form of a servant, and he was born in a stable, laying in a manger, a feeding trough for animals, and how that little baby grew up to be Jesus, who died on the cross for us and rose from the dead to show us that he was, in fact, very God. Well, this morning, I get the opportunity to talk in, about the shepherds. So if you have your Bibles handy, I want you to stick your, your finger in uh, Matthew chapter 2. And if you have your, your Bible um, in, on digital form in your phone, uh, you, can, you can have, well, I don't know what you do, I don't know if you put your finger there or whatever you do, but whatever you do, just have that handy. So I want to read for you um, uh, the, the story of the Magi found in, in Matthew chapter 2. And uh, um, we're, I'm calling them the seekers. It says, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, starting with verse 1 in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. I want to just stop there. So first of all, uh, one of the things that I love about the gospel is that the gospel is for everyone. I, that is a hill that I am prepared to die upon. That it is not only for the Jews, but the, the Jesus came for every single person. Everyone, regardless of where you were born in the world, your ethnicity, your gender, uh, what nationality you are. That the, there is this universal message that the kingdom of God is available for everyone. So enter these wise men. Now, again, uh, you know, we, we're going to sing at the end of the, the, our time together, we three kings. They weren't kings. They were magi. But they were, were people who studied and looked at the stars. Now, if you've heard this before, there is a difference between astrologers and astronomers. Astronomers, there is no religious connotation to an astronomer. You look at the stars and it says, oh yeah, there's Orion's belt. I can find that one. And I just happened to be in the southern hemisphere uh, a month ago. And you know, you can only see the southern cross from below, you know, the, the zero equator and all of those things. And I was looking at the stars or whatever. Well, that's astronomy. And we see how everything all works together. Astrology has a religious connotation. And astrologers, uh, they were looking to the stars to inform them about faith and about direction in their lives. Now, what I love about this is that the, the Bible talks about the fact that we are not governed by, by the stars. We are not. You know, that again, and I don't mean to offend anyone here, but again, uh, the horoscope is something that's made up. And if you read it, it says, well, it comes true. Well, it's because you set yourself up for that. You read it, it says, oh, today's going to be a good day. So it's a good day. And you say, look, that's what my horoscope said. So um, one of my favorite uh, writers from the, from the 60s was a guy named Larry Norman. And he said, oh, forget your hexagram. You'll soon feel fine. Stop looking at the stars. You don't live under the sign. Don't, whatever. And he went on and on and on about how we are not controlled by the stars. So these guys, they were not necessarily people that we would say, well, boy, those are really spiritual guys. Well, they were spiritual guys, but God, in the midst of their not knowing any better, God used the heavens to explain to them that there was this king that was born, king of the Jews, where we have seen his star in the east. Now, I did some research about this, and of course, if you notice that scientists, they have a really hard time with things they can't explain. 
that it just goes contrary to the way they think. Like a scientist says, well, why did it happen like this? And how do we explain this? And so the Bible, we see, especially in, this, in the story of Jesus, Jesus was God and is God, and he can do whatever he wants. If he wants to create a star just for, for the Bethlehem situation, he could do that. Why? Because he's God. And there is nothing too hard for him. And so again, you know, the scientists are saying, well, it was a, a confluence between these two planets and it, it burned a little brighter or maybe it was a comet or whatever. Well, all I know is, is regardless of how God did it, there was a star and it rose in the east. And so these astrologers, because they were looking for something, and I would suggest to you that they were seeking something a little bit more. And so again, when we read about the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts, you know, he went and he was preaching on the Areopagus, and that was this hill in, in Athens where people went to talk about new things. And so he said, I see that you're very religious, and he whom you are worshiping in ignorance, not knowing any better, I now proclaim to you, it's Jesus. So they came and they were seeking so I have three points to my message today, and so I'll get an A in, in, in preaching on this one. So we, we're, what we see is, is that they had eyes to see, they had ears to hear, and they had hearts to seek. And so what I want to do is, is I want to look at each one of these situations. So God reached down, you know, I, I like to create these little movies in my head. So I, I believe what was happening is, is that we, we think that there was three, and the only reason we think there's three is because there were three gifts. There could have been more. We don't know. But we know that there was at least three of them. So this is what, what I like to say. One of the guys, he was, couldn't sleep, and he was out on the top of the veranda, and he was looking out. And all of a sudden, he observed this star that all of a sudden appeared, and it's in the eastern sky. And he's thinking, oh, I think this is significant. So I think he went and he woke up his buddies. And he says, come on up. you got to come up, and you got to see this. Oh, what do you mean? I want to catch my sleep. Well, you won't be able to see it in the morning. you got to come and see this. So they went up, and they says, wow, I think there's something going on here. So they began to talk, and, and maybe they said, you know, maybe, maybe there is a God who, who cares and who is in charge of the entire universe, and maybe this is a sign. And so we, they just felt compelled that they needed to follow that star. So it says, they it said, we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. So they had eyes to see. So let me tell you something. I can tell you this without any qualification. You will not see what you're not looking for. And you will not see if you have your eyes closed. Now, uh, you know, I'm an older guy, and, and I have all these old songs from the 60s and the 70s, and there was this guy, Ray Stevens, and he says, he sang this song, Everything is Beautiful in Its Own Way. He says, there's none so blind as he who will not see. Let's open our eyes. So on this 28th of December, or is it the 29th today? 29th, okay. 29th today. Here's what happens. I don't know where you are in your faith journey. But I believe that God had an appointed time for you to be here. You were here to witness as one of your family was water baptized. Or maybe you just came in and you said, hey, it's, you know, it's the last Sunday in 2019. I think I'll go hang out in church. Well, you are here by design. And so what happens is you got to open your eyes. So they were looking. And because they were looking, God could reveal himself. So one of the things that I love about God is, is that God is not up in heaven playing spiritual peekaboo with us. You know, people are saying, well, if God would appear, or if God would show himself that I would believe him. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that the, the scriptures actually prove that that's not true, that God interjected himself into human history and people didn't see him. Some said he was God. No, he wasn't. Oh, some says, oh, he's just a good man. No, he's the prophet. But the Bible says that Jesus revealed himself, and he said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So they had eyes, and they were looking. So let me just say, well, my dad and I, you know, he's with Jesus now, and we used to talk about this. And once upon a time in church, we used to be kind of goofy, and we would say, well, there's believers and non-believers. I don't think that's true. I think everybody believes in something. 
And so, again, what we would say is that we often were quite religious and quite stoic, and you've you got to do this and this and this and this and this. And so one of the things that I like to say, I love having conversations with people who are seeking after truth. I love that. And so what happens is when I'm talking to somebody, instead of saying, are you a Christian? Do you believe Jesus? Blah, 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 blah. One of my favorite questions is, can you tell me about your faith journey? So I want to say to you, every single person in this room is on a faith journey of some sort. My encouragement to you is to be like the wise men, and I would say that you, have to, you need to open your eyes, have eyes to see what God is doing. Now, again, I like to read through the scriptures every year, and I was reading in the book of Romans, and it talks about how it says that the heavens, that they are witnesses of the, of the majesty of God. And, and when I look at creation, I just can't wrap my head around evolution. I just can't. It's like we see all of this all working together, and it's like as ridiculous as taking a, a, a finely crafted Swiss watch, taking it all apart, putting it in a paper bag, and shaking it for a million years and have it come out working. I believe that there is a design in the universe and that there is intelligence behind that design and that intelligence is personal and that's God. Having eyes to see. The next thing is that they had ears to hear. And so again, uh, as they were walking their way through this, you'll see in the story, and let's keep reading it. I'm now at verse three. And when King Herod heard that he, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him, for he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law. He asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be a shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found them out that exact time that, in, that the star had appeared. Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you hear, as soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star that they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. See, that's God's leading them. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. I love the King James. It says, and they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. So let me tell you something, again, where you are, wherever you are on your faith journey, that being a follower of Jesus is not something that's just about hardship and about sorrow and difficulty. But when we really see Jesus for who he is, when we see that star, we see Jesus, we see that it can bring exceedingly great joy. A great joy that it is for all the people. And joy is not happiness. Happiness is very external. Joy is something that's birthed on the inside. And said, says, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. They were seeking. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of cold, incense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route. They had ears to hear. God warned them and said, hey, that Herod guy, he's not a good guy. He's got an ulterior motive, and they were warned in a dream. God still speaks to us today. He speaks through preachers like me or pastors like me. He speaks through podcasts. He speaks through pop culture. I see lots of places in pop culture where God is pointing us to himself. But in this situation, they were warned in a dream, and it said, and they heeded the dream, and they went by another way. So they had ears to hear. They had eyes to see. They had ears to hear. And the third thing is, they had hearts to seek. Now, as we look at this story, so here they were, there someplace, and I looked this up again this morning, and someplace in Iran or Iraq or someplace points points east and they they left and they went from where they were and they actively and consciously sought truth and so let me tell you something like i said i don't know all of you in this room i'm so glad you're here but you are again on some sort of a faith journey and so if you are dedicated to finding the truth the bible says if you seek me with all of your heart you will find me. 
God's not saying, here I am. Oh, now I'm gone. Here I am. Now I'm gone. But God is constantly and continuously revealing himself to people who are looking. They had a heart to seek. Now, again, uh, our, we have a, a house and we have our grandkids here for Christmas and whatever. And, and the one thing that's lacking from our house that would make it just really ideal would be an unfinished basement Amen. where we could chew them all downstairs. Well, all of a sudden, over the last six months, they have, they have uh, discovered this, the, the joy of hide-and-seek in our house. And again, what happens is, is you know the game that you go seeking, you know, and it's kind of like, well, if, if the guy that's hiding, if he wants me to find him, he'll come and reveal himself to me. It doesn't work like that. In fact, you know, you, but you actively pursue and seek and you're looking and saying, I want to open my eyes. These people, they had hearts to seek. And it says, and when they saw the child, they bowed down and they worshiped him. Now, this morning, uh, as we were here, you had an opportunity, for those of you who are visiting with us, that this is a, a picture of what we do on a given Sunday, except we don't always have wonderful uh, coffee and stuff for you to eat. Sorry about that. But we talk about the fact that we come to worship him. Now, again, if you've been a Christian for any length of time, it, one of the things that kind of trips me up is people will say this. They'll say, well, now we're going to worship, and that means now we're going to sing. And this is one of my bugaboos, okay? It's just one of those things that every time I can, I want to try to bring a fuller understanding. So it's kind of like, well, what were we doing before we sang? So worship, music is a form of worship. What you're doing right now is a form of worship. You are taking time to quiet your hearts, quiet your souls, quiet your spirits, and you're unplugged and you're saying, for this period of time, I am in this place and I want to be thinking in terms of what am I doing? Why am I doing it? Where, who is God? What does he mean to me? And so worship then is where we ascribe worship to someone or something. So we worship through music. In this situation, when they saw the Christ out, they bowed their knees. And it says, and they worshiped and they presented him with treasures. And so you present treasures to people whom you value. So again, this morning, this story is all about people who were seeking God. So again, if you've been a Christian for any length of time, can I challenge you going into this new year to seek a new and a fresh, as it were, and, and we talk, we have one of the songs that we sing, it says a fresh anointing or a fresh outpouring. And one of the things that happens is, is if you've been a Christian for any length of time, just like if you've been married for any length of time, or you've had a job for any length of time, unless you choose otherwise, that which was born in love and strength and joy and peace becomes just something that becomes tedious. That is not what God is calling for us. Worship, bow down, and acknowledge that he is God and we are not. Open your eyes. Open your ears. You know, again, there's another scripture and another story that I love. It's the story of Elijah, and he was seeking after God, and it says that there was an earthquake, and God wasn't in the earthquake, and then there was a big fire, and God wasn't in the fire, and then there was a windstorm, and God wasn't in the windstorm. And then what happens is, but then there was this still, gentle voice, the whisper of God, saying, Elijah, I want to speak to you. So this morning, I want to just have an opportunity to challenge you in a good way. As we, as a church, and church is made up of individuals, as, as you're here today, I want you to know that I am, we are declaring 2020 the year of God's favor and his appointed time. There's two Greek words, and you might say, oh my goodness, how, what did I walk into? This is not a Greek lesson. But the New Testament was written in Greek. There's two Greek words for time. One is chronos, which is what your clock says. But the other is this thing called kairos. And kairos time is an appointed time. It's a season of favor. And I want you to know that I want to bless every single one of you in this room that God is saying to you 
that he wants to show you his blessing and his favor in 2020. But you got to open your eyes because if you're not looking for it, you'll miss it. You got to open your ears. If you're not listening for it, you won't hear it. And if you don't have a heart to seek, there will be many things that will become rivals for worship of God. Would you pray with me? Father, as we have been here today, Lord, I love this kind of a service. Lord, it's a very biblical thing. It says that they went house to house and they, they ate together and they had fun and they laughed and they prayed and they rejoiced and they witnessed water baptisms and they, they sang songs and hymns to encourage one another and to, they came together to, to make sure that, that everyone was, was tucked in. And so, Lord, as we have looked at this story of the wise men, God, I would pray for all of us around this table, these tables this morning. Lord, open our eyes. But Lord, I pray that we would open our eyes, that we would be people who would be looking for what you're doing in our lives. So Lord, if, you, if, if we're still around next year, Lord, that we will be able to say, surely we saw the miracles that the Lord was doing because we opened our eyes in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, God, that you would restore our hearing. Lord, there are those who, who, whose hearing is very acute in the physical and those who need help. But Lord, we can all hear clearly. We can all hear clearly if we will tune our ears and we will, like little Samuel in the Old Testament, where he said, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Lord, let us hear your warnings. Lord, let us hear your direction. Let us hear of your love for us. Lord, we pray this. And finally, Lord God, we would pray for our hearts. Lord, we would pray, God, that regardless of whether we grew up in church or not, maybe we were people like the Magi. They were just looking for truth. They didn't have an enriched environment where they knew about the God of Israel and whatever. And yet, even in the midst of, of their fumbling around and going places and looking in places and looking at the stars for direction, they came to a point where they recognized the fact that their, their destiny did not lie in the stars and what the stars said, but their destiny lay in the worship of the Christ child, Jesus, the Son of God, come in the flesh. I pray, God, that you would help us to be people who would really recognize that this is the appointed time. This is the appointed time. I want to just, would you keep your eyes closed? I want to pray for those of you who are struggling in your marriage. Nobody's looking around. But I want to just declare to you that the Lord is saying that this is your Kairos moment, your Kairos time, where he wants to bring healing and wholeness, where there's been strife and turmoil and tension, that he wants to bring peace and love and bring fresh, fresh, fresh wind into that relationship. God, we pray this in Jesus' name. God, we pray blessing upon marriages. For those, some of you who, who have, have been, there have been relationships that have ended this year or, or in the last couple of years, and it just seems like you're in a desert, I want to just proclaim to you that God is saying he has a plan for your life. Your life isn't over. That he has a Kairos season for you, and if you'll open your eyes, you will open your ears, and you will have an open heart that he will reveal to you what he wants to do. Father, in the name of Jesus and in the authority of Jesus' name, Lord, I pray, Father, for those who are working their way through difficult times, disappointments, betrayals, broken relationships. Lord, I pray, God, that you would just breathe life and let them know that you have a plan and it's good. In Jesus' name. Maybe you're here this morning and, and like you said, you didn't kind of know what you were signing up for. But I want you to know I believe that every single person in this room is here by divine appointment. And I just want to pray for you. If you have not yet made a decision for Jesus Christ, maybe he's still the babe in the manger. Maybe he's still the great teacher that walked amongst us. Maybe he was the one that you know something about the story of Easter. But I want you to know I heard as one of the young women in the, in the baptistry this morning, she said, I knew about God, but I didn't have a personal relationship with God. Nobody's looking around. I'm going to keep my eyes open. But maybe you're here this morning and you say, Pastor Tom, 
that that what you're saying makes sense. And and by raising your hand, you're saying, I want to open my heart. I want to recognize that Jesus wasn't as the Son of God and that He loves me and He has a plan. And I want to become a Christian. I want to say, I am a follower of Jesus. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to stand or come forward. But right where you are, you can raise your hand and you can say, I'm making a decision to receive Jesus as my Savior. Is there anybody like that? Just raise your hand. I'd love a chance to pray with you. Anyone? Anyone? Okay. So, Lord, as we enter into the last few days of this year, Lord, we thank you, God, that we can trust you. And, Lord, I would pray, God, that that the message that, that you laid on my heart about these wise men who were seeking you I pray, God, that you would stir in our hearts that we can all seek you with a new fervor. We ask this, we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said together, amen. Why don't you stand with me? And I thought we should close uh, with uh, singing this. You know, it's Christmas, and we can still sing We Three Kings of Orinar. They couldn't find a rhyme for We Majesty or Ma you know, Magi, so it's We Three Kings. And this will be our closing song. Let's sing it together. We Three Kings of Orient are bearing gifts we travel afar field and fountain moor and mountain following yonder star oh star of wonder star of light star with roar all of you who brought stuff and again you know you brought so much there's an abundance and so if you want to grab something on the way out please feel free to do that and if you brought something and you want to take it home you do that now here's a little housekeeping details it's family stuff so we live in delta and because we live in delta that uh, delta is very sticky about how we sort our trash so I'm going to invite you to help. So we have three, not three kings, but three bins. No. So, okay, we have a bin for paper plates and cups at the auditorium door. So again, if there's like anything that's met, like if you had tarts, that doesn't go in to that. It goes into another. That's but the but the plates, that's all recyclable. And again, God bless you, and we look forward to the new year. God bless.